Okay, so today's video is going to be about plant response. Okay, so plants respond to stimuli. If you remember, a stimulus is anything that causes a response or a change. So plants will respond to stimuli. Some of the various stimuli that they can respond to are things like light, uh, gravity, water, uh, touch. All of those things can cause a change within the plant. And when the plant responds to that stimuli, it can be either what's called a positive or a negative response. And positive and negative in this case do not mean good or bad. A positive just means that it grows towards the stimulus. So it's positive in the sense that it's going in the same direction. It's going toward the stimulus. And negative then, it would grow away from the stimulus. So plants are able to respond to these stimuli using hormones. Plants don't have a nervous system, but they do have an extensive network of hormones to allow the, the cells to communicate one, with one another and for the plant to be able to have some sort of response. Uh, one of the hormone examples here is auxin. A auxin allows for cell growth and cell elongation. And so you can see when there's a stimulus, in this case the stimulus here is the sun, okay, and so the auxin encourages cell growth on one side but not the other so the plant will end up bending and growing towards the sun. Some other hormones that can help control response are things like ethylene. A ethylene is important in fruit ripening. It helps regulate the fruit ripening. In the last video we talked about putting uh, produce in brown bags and having it ripen sooner uh, as well as the loss of leaves. Okay, so ethylene will help regulate that. You all don't have to memorize plant hormones. You just need to really be aware that they exist and that they cause, uh, these are what cause the change and cause the response within the plant. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is what's called phototropism. Okay, and you'll notice these all end, most of these will end here with this tropism. Okay, uh, tropism is this growth response. And so in this case, in the case of phototropism, we're talking about photo, which is light. And so the plant is growing in response to the light. And so usually this is going to be a positive phototropism. And so the plant will almost always grow toward the light. You can see this plant here, again with that increase of oxygen on one side. And so it will bend and start to grow towards the light. Okay, and the benefit to the plant here is that it's going to be able to um, do more photosynthesis because it's going to be absorbing more light as it angles towards the light to get better uh, sun exposure. And so then it's going to be able to do more photosynthesis and in turn be able to make more food so that it can then make more ATP. Okay, the next one is what we would call gravitropism or geotropism. And so gravitropism or geotropism is the growth in response to gravity. Okay? And most plants will exhibit both positive and negative gravitropism. You can see the plant in this picture over here. It's uh, the roots here do a positive gravitropism because they're growing down with gravity. But the shoot system here will do actually does a negative geo or gravitropism because it goes against gravity. A third tropism here would be hydrotropism and so hydro means water so this time the plant is growing in response to water. Again this is usually like phototropism going to be a positive response. The roots are going to go towards the water source so that they can get more uh, nutrients for growth. Um, another plant response, uh, in addition to plant response to water, it's not a tropism, okay, but germination is also in response to water. Germination is when the seed starts to sprout, okay, when it starts to um, show the roots and the shoots start to emerge from the seed. Okay, you can see the, um, this would be the germinating part right there. Germination will occur when there is enough water available. So again, it's not a tropism per se, but it is another response to water stimulus. Okay, the last tropism we're going to talk about is what's called thigmotropism. Thigmotropism is that growth response to touch. 
And this is extremely important, as you can see here, in like climbing vines. Okay, as they touch the stake that they're going to wind around, they will grow in the direction according to that in response to touch. This would be an example of a positive thigmotropism. They're growing um, around and staying close to touching it. A negative would be as if something touched it and started to grow away from that. That would then be a negative thigmotropism. Plants can also do what are called nastic movements. And these are very quick, very rapid movements in response to some kind of stimulus. So your tropisms, you know, these are growth, and so they're going to take a little while for the response to happen. These are immediate, very quick responses, and they're going to be due to, they're going to be a result of osmosis. If you remember what osmosis is, osmosis is the diffusion of water. So what happens is the plants release ions, things like calcium, uh, potassium. So they release these ions. And if you remember, water flows from a high concentration to a low concentration. So if they, they uptake and release these ions. So if the plant takes up a lot of these ions, then it's going to take on more water. If the plant releases a lot of these ions, then it's going to lose water because the water will follow those ions. So when the stimulus comes in, that triggers the movement of these ions, which then triggers the movement of the water. And when the water moves, remember that's going to alter the turgor pressure. Remember, turgor pressure is that pressure inside of the plant cell due to how much water is inside that central vacuole. Remember, this kind of plant here um, would have a high turgor pressure. This plant over here, those cells would be flaccid, possibly wilting because it has a very low turgor pressure. And so these stimuli alter this turgor pressure very, very quickly. It can cause the plant cell to either droop or stiffen very quickly. And again, these are going to be a response to a stimulus, but not a tropism. They're not going to grow in response to the stimulus. Okay, so the uh, first one, first example we're going to have here is what's called a venastic movement. It would be a uh, photonasty, and this is going to be light in response to light. So when, um, in this example here, with this particular plant, when there is uh, darkness, that's going to cause the leaves to droop. So darkness then is going to decrease the turgor pressure in those leaves. Okay, it's going to cause the ions to leave the cell, and so the water will follow. So we're going to decrease in turgor pressure in those leaves, which in turn then would cause them to droop. And so in response to light then, there'd be an increase in turgor pressure, and they would stiffen back up. The other example we're going to look at here is a uh, thigmonastic movement, which again would be a movement in response to touch. And it's hard to see, but if you look really closely in this plant, you can see these plants here. See how those leaves are kind of folding up in on themselves? That's a response to the touch. So again, in response to uh, the stimulus, there is a change in turgor pressure. Uh, this can be important in defense mechanisms for plants. It can startle the large herbivores to discourage them from eating the plant. Okay, it could also possibly knock the smaller ones off. So then they, uh, smaller ones like insect, um, insects, so that then they are no longer feeding off of the plant. Um, other kinds of plants, some of your carnivorous plants, use this to help trap insects. Uh, for example, like a Venus flytrap. So this is your Venus flytrap here, okay? And it uses these uh, thigmonastic responses to help trap the insects. You see these little trigger hairs here on the plant? So when those are stimulated with touch by the insect, the Venus flytrap will snap shut and catch the insect. Okay, uh, one of the things we need to realize about carnivorous plants okay, is that they uh, still do photosynthesis. They are still photosynthetic. They just live in regions where um, they have very low nitrogen in the soil. And nitrogen is very important. In, remember, we have nitrogen bases in the DNA, in the RNA. Uh, nitrogen is in the amino acids for proteins. And plants need all of these things. And so these live, uh, these kind of plants live in areas where the soil is usually very low in nitrogen. And so they need to supplement that nitrogen with insects. So carnivorous plants don't only eat insects. They still do photosynthesis. So we'll be doing some work with this stuff coming up in class.